Well, one people, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Tadi, and in this video, we're going to be discussing why you are finding it difficult to get a job in cybersecurity. So, a while ago, a few days ago, I was scrolling on LinkedIn as usual, and I bumped into a post that I really liked. It's by Thomas Richard. Let me just put it up real quick, and we can start digesting. There we go. Thomas Richard, right? He's a penetration tester, recruiter, staffing specialist. ETC and this post is three days old. I bumped into it, I read through it, and I was like, dang, this is actually true. Junior penetration testers entering the market need a flipping reality check now and way more support when it comes to getting into offensive security, getting into the offensive security space. Why? Because it's not as easy as everyone thinks. And when folks hear that there's a massive skills gap within the penetration testing job market, which there is. The natural reaction is to think that getting a job would be relatively straightforward. It's not. I'm going to let everyone in on a little secret. The skill gap within penetration testing is very real. The skill gap is there, but it only exists at the very senior end of the market and sometimes the mid, not the junior end. And that is the harsh reality. These are the words of Thomas Richard. And I find that very interesting because all you ever see and all you ever hear is the fact that there is a skills gap, but they never tell you where that skills gap is. So you automatically think, oh, I can start and try at me, do hack the box, do a couple of projects and I'll get a job. But uh, you quickly find out that you will not get a job that easily, right? You have to do a lot of interviewing. You have to fail a lot of interviews. You have to get rejected time and time again until you eventually get lucky. And that's what they don't tell you, right? They just tell you, take this course, take my course, spend thousands of dollars in this, do that as well, and you get a job, right, eh? After you spend those thousands of dollars, you still might not get a job. The post continues. Question from a junior. How the hell do I get to be a senior if no one will give me a chance to prove myself as a junior? And we all start somewhere, and this person just wants to prove themselves as a junior, but they're not getting the opportunities. They keep getting rejected, and they might have fell down the rabbit hole of thinking that all you need to do is do some try hacking me and some hack the box. Which, in a lot of cases, I've seen some cases, let me not say a lot, but I've seen some cases where people just do hack the box, grind it out, get to a very good rank, and someone on Discord pings them, they're like, oh, I have a job opportunity for you. I've seen the way you've been doing hack the box. Here's a job offer, and you know, I think that's the exception, not the rule, but let's continue. And Thomas Richard continues saying, the answer is they will, right? They will give you an opportunity to prove yourself, but it's not going to be as easy and try to remember that anything worth having is worth fighting for. So here's the three things you need to put on your to-do list as a junior. Get the OSCP. Let me finish before I say anything else. Get the OSCP, love it or hate it, it's the single best HR busters on the planet. Yes, PNPT is cool. Yes, Daniel's Rust and Mouse courses. So, so sick right now. But you gotta trust me here. As things stand, no other cert, and I mean no other cert, will help you get an interview like OSCP will. End quote. This has been the case for a lot of people. A lot of people I know have told me that as soon as they got to the OSCP, they started getting interviews. And at some point, they were able to get you know, a job offer and they started working professionally. And this was the case for me as well. But I always preface that in my situation by saying I did other things before the OACP. I was posting content, all that other stuff. So as soon as I posted on LinkedIn that I had finally got the OACP, people that had been seeing the other things I was doing were like, yo, this kid has been doing this, this and that. They posted a while ago that they're studying for the OACP. Now they have it. Let's you know let's ping him see what let's ping him and see what he can offer so that was the case for me oscp got me interviews if you have the 1300 i think that's how much it is right now if you have 1300 bucks to spend borrow even if you have to if you can borrow 1300 grind as much as you can so that you don't fail the first time because you're going to spend another three four hundred bucks for a retake so grind as much as you can so that you don't fail the first time and uh hopefully after then you'll start getting interviews but once you get interviews, you have to learn how to interview. So there's that as well. Let's continue. Second thing that you need to put on your to-do list, 
your separation hours. Separation hours are what you do before and after work. What are you doing while everyone else is watching TV after work or having a nice lay day before work? Separation hours compounded over time equals progress. Utilize the abundance of mega learning resources online. HTB and Triacne are two we all know and love. There's loads more, right? There's all these GOAT instances. I recently posted a list of 40 vulnerable instances that you can practice on. Kubernetes, Cloud, Web, GOAT, Mobile, GOAT, iOS, GOAT, everything. It's there. This is another good point. Separation hours. Separation hours. Of course, you cannot get consumed by just cybersecurity. You will burn out eventually. But take time outside of your work schedule to get more practice and read on other topics that you might find interesting and even topics that you don't find interesting because some of those topics are the ones that are in demand so get that done and then the third thing he put on his list draft up to between 50 and 100 dms to send to mega senior penetration testers on linkedin over the next two months look at their profiles first to show them you care and make sure your dm shows them this right simply ask them for help a great question to ask would be hi john can you give me a mini five-year plan on how i can get to where you are in your career today by the way my recent video on cybersecurity roadmap covers a roadmap that you can use from associate level to mid-level to senior and beyond so check that out link will be in the description so it continues and says including says learning resources and experiences that you valued along the way personalize the message and be very polite and very persistent honestly the number one thing i can tell you about dming someone on linkedin is personalize the message i get messages and people are like yo toddy wagwan what's up what's going on i've watched all your videos i find them very helpful but please answer this question for me and then they go on to ask a question i have a video specifically for which makes no sense i'm like you said you watched all my videos why are you asking me this because i've clearly answered it i don't reply to such messages usually and i get why people wouldn't re reply either bruh you just said you watched all my videos now you go ahead and ask me how do i start preparing for the oscp when i have a 39 minute video just for that don't be stupid don't waste my time don't waste your own time people will not reply to that sort of talk <laughs> post continues helping juniors is a big topic which i'll bring up again yada 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 don't forget this the industry is flipping awesome because it's highly rewarding gives you a massive sense of belonging and purpose pays well and offers amazing progression throughout your entire career but please don't think for a moment it's easy it's really not the junior end of the market is fiercely competitive and you gotta do things to make you stand out from the noise honestly loved this post agree with most of what it says if not everything actually there are some comments that i'd like to go through there's one comment this is the comment i wanted to read by tyler hardy i think it's critical to let people know that penetration testing is extremely extremely heavily oriented towards those many years in it cybersecurity and there's effectively no demand for people with zero experience it's not the world that social media influencers sell you but that's how the market looks true entry-level positions in pen testing are rare enough that you'll see them blasted across social media with thousands of applications each time during periods of economic downturns like the one we are currently in it gets even worse because skipping any non-mandatory pen tests is an easy way to trim some meat off the budget right and that means you have fewer engagements which means you need fewer pen testers which means layoffs of experienced folks that flood an already existing tiny market you've seen google meta amazon lay people off so you really need to do things that will make you stand out i do not have much else to say at this point this video is long enough and i think i've driven the point home do keep working hard stand out look for cool projects make them fun enjoy yourself in the process don't get yourself into trouble hack ethically and um i will catch you in the next one peace